Assalamu alaikum doctors. Let's discuss today neonatal genders. So what is neonatal period? Neonatal period means from birth to 28 days. From birth, from birth to 28 days. And what is genders? Genders means when serum bilirubin level exceeds in blood. So as a result of that, there is yellow discoloration of skin, sclera and mucous membrane. So genders means when serum bilirubin exceeds in the blood. So there is, what happens? Yellow discoloration of skin, sclera and mucous membrane occur. So that is genders. So there are two types of neonatal genders. That is called as physiological genders and pathological genders. There are two types of neonatal genders, physiological genders and pathological genders. So in physiological genders, clinically genders appear, clinically genders appear after 24 hours of birth of baby. So in physiological genders, genders appear after one day of life of baby. So I already make a detailed video on physiological genders. So make sure to watch that video first. I will also provide link in the description. So in this video, we will be more dealing with the pathological genders. So in pathological genders, gen clinically genders appear, clinically genders appear within 24 hours of birth of baby. So in pathological genders, the genders appear within 24 hours of birth of baby. And the maximum and peak bilirubin value is that is more than 13 mg per dl. So the peak bilirubin level is more than 13 mg per dl in case of pathological genders. And clinically genders persist, clinically genders persist more than one week in terms and two weeks in preterms child. So in case of pathological genders, the clinical genders appear more, sorry, clinical genders persist more than one week in terms babies while in preterm babies it persists in two weeks. So it is important. Now coming toward the certain important causes of pathological genders. So let's discuss the causes of pathological genders. So what is the most common cause of pathological genders? Let's discuss the causes of pathological genders. The most common cause of pathological genders is there is when there is excessive destruction of RBC. So which is the most common cause of pathological genders? When there is excessive destruction of RBC. And excessive destruction of RBC, it is due to, it is due to, first is, that is called as RH incompatibility. RH incompatibility. So what does it mean? In RH incompatibility, the mother is RH negative. In RH incompatibility, mother is RH negative while fetus is RH positive. So what happens that the fetal RBC, fetal RBC, it crosses the placenta and enters into maternal circulation. So here the mother antibodies are produced, mother antibodies produce, mother antibodies produced in the form of IgG. So this IgG antibody, it crosses the placenta and eventually it causes the hemolysis in newborn. 
and first child it is unaffected but with the increase uh, numbering of parity the chance of infection is increases so in rh incompatibility the mother is rh negative fetus is rh positive the fetal rbc it crosses the placenta and enters into maternal circulation so there is also the maternal antibodies produced in the form of igg this igg antibody it crosses the placenta and causes the hemolysis in newborns so in such a way it causes the excessive destruction of rbc similarly there is an another incompatibility that is called as abo incompatibility abo incompatibility so what happens in abo incompatibility the mother blood group is o while fetus blood group is a or b in abo incompatibility the mother group is o while the fetus blood group is a or b similarly here also the maternal antibodies they are mounted against the fetal rbc and cause destruction in hemolysis in the newborns and also and there is also congenital spherocytosis so it also lead to the excess rbc destruction so this is the major and main cause of new uh, and main cause of pathological jaundice so what is the another cause of pathological jaundice that is faulty that is faulty conjugation of bilirubin so the another cause of pathological jaundice there is faulty conjugation of bilirubin let's say for example there is there is a condition called as krigler najjar syndrome so what is krigler najjar syndrome actually it is a autoimmune diseases it is a autoimmune disease where there is antigen and antibody reaction antigen antibody reaction occur and those antigen antibody reaction it act on the liver cells when it act on liver cells so what happens it cause destruction of liver cells it cause destruction of liver cells and also as we know that in the liver a liver has a specific enzymes that is called as udp that is called as udp gd that is uridine diphosphate glutarolyl transferase so this is a specific enzyme which is present in the liver what is the major function of the udp gt it convert the unconjugated form of bilirubin into conjugated form of bilirubin so when there is destruction of liver cells ultimately the level of udp gt it is decreases so when the udp gt udp gt level decreases so the unconjugated form of bilirubin is unable to convert into conjugated form of bilirubin so we can say that the unconjugated bilirubin level is increases unconjugated bilirubin level uh, unconjugated bilirubin level it increases which lead to the pathological jaundice so this is important in the case of krigler najjar syndrome the unconjugated form of bilirubin level is inc increases rather than conjugated form of bilirubin secondly there is a important complication or associated with the krigler najjar syndrome and that is called as kernicterus and kernicterus occur when the serum bilirubin level is more than 20 mg per dl so it is important in krigler najjar syndrome it is a autoimmune disease there is antigen antibody reaction occur those antigen antibody reaction it act on liver cells and eventually cause destruction of liver cells and lead to decreased level of udp gt and udp gt which helps and convert which helps and the conversion of unconjugated form of bilirubin into into conjugated form of bilirubin as the level is decreases here so the unconjugated bilirubin level is increased which lead to the jaundice and the most important complication associated with the krigler najjar syndrome is kernicterus and the treatment option is oral phenobarbital in this case now what is the other cause of the pathological jaundice let's discuss the remaining causes so that is some of the metabolic disorder are also lead to the pathological jaundice so metabolic disorders it included like galactosemia and hypothyroidism but these conditions are very rare so certain metabolic disorders could lead to pathological jaundice 
such as a in condition of galactosemia and in hypothyroidism. So what are the other kinds of pathological jaundice? That is called as breast milk jaundice. That is called as breast milk jaundice. So breast milk contain an important component. Breast milk contain important component that is called as pregomine. That is called as pregomine 3 alpha 2 beta that is pregomine 3 alpha 2 beta diol. So in the breast milk there is active component that is called as pregomine 3 alpha 2 beta diol. Actually what is it? It is the metabolite of progesterone. It is the pro metabolite of progesterone. So what is metabolite? Metabolite means that it is the end product of progesterone or it is the intermediate component of the intermediate product of the progesterone. So now what is the main action of this pregamine 3 alpha 2 beta diol? The main action of this component is that so it decreases the level of UDP GT. It decreases the level of UDP GT. That is uridine diphosphate glutaryl transferase. What is the main action of this enzyme? This is enzyme which is found in the liver. It converts the unconjugated bilirubin. It converts the unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin. So here it decreases the level of uridine diphosphate glutaryl transferase. So what happens? Unconjugated bilirubin is unable to convert into conjugated bilirubin. So the conjugated bilirubin level is decreased here and the unconjugated bilirubin level is increased here. So it may lead to the pathological genders. The another cause is breastfeeding genders. That is called as breastfeeding genders. In breastfeeding genders, it is due to the insufficient breastfeeding. It is due to insufficient breastfeeding which lead to decreased intestinal motility. So, the, in breastfeeding genders, there is lack of breastfeeding, so there is decreased intestinal moti motility, so the bilirubin excretion is not occur. Bilirubin excretion is not occur as such. So, these are all are the important and main causes of pathological genders. So, now let's discuss the uh, treatment option for the pathological genders. So, there are four treatment options available for pathological genders. The first is, that is called phenobarbitones. So let's discuss the treatment option. Now it is divided into four treatment options. The first is called is pharmacological treatment. Second is there is phototherapy. Third is there is intravenous aminoglobulins and exchange blood transfusion. So these are the possible treatment options in case of pathological genders. That is pharmacological treatment, phototherapy, intravenous immunoglobulins, exchange blood transfusion. So these first two are more common. So now let's discuss the pharmacological treatment option. Here we give the phenobarbitone. Phenobarbitone. Now what is the main action of phenobarbitone? It improve the, improve the function of liver. It improves the function of liver. And as we know that in the liver, liver has a important enzymes that is called as UDP GT. That is uridine diphosphate glutaryl transferase. It converts the unconjugated form of bilirubin into conjugated form of bilirubin. So as it improves the function of this enzyme, so what happens that the conjugated bilirubin is and sorry, the unconjugated bilirubin, it converts into conjugated bilirubin and thus the bilirubin is excreted from the body in the form of stercobilinogens in the stools and in the form of urobilinogen in the urine. And it is being reported that in 80% cases, the bilirubin, it is excreted in the stools while in 20% cases, the bilirubin is excreted in the urines. So, in the pharmacological treatment option, the first treatment option is phenobarbitone. Now, what is the dose of phenobarbitone? The dose of phenobarbitone that is 3 to 8 mg per kilogram body weight per day. So what is the dose of phenobarbitone that is 3 to 8 mg per kilogram body weight per day unless and until the value of bilirubin comes normal. So this is the first. So there is 
मिटालो पोरफायरेंस मिटालो पोरफायरेंस एंड इट डिक्रीज द बिलोबिन प्रोडक्शन इट डिक्रीज द बिलोबिन प्रोडक्शन नाउ द थर्ड ऑप्शन इज दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सिफ्ट राइक जोन सिफ्ट राइक जोन एंड इट इज एंटीबायोटिक यूज टू इट इज एंटीबायोटिक यूज टू प्रिवेंट इन्फेक्शन सो इन द फार्माकोलॉजिकल ट्रीटमेंट वी हैव ए फिनोबर्बिटोन ऑप्शन मेटालोपोरफायर एंड सेफ्राइक जोन सेकेंडली देर इज इन एनदर ऑप्शन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज फोटोथेरापी विच इज द मोस्ट कॉमन मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट इन केस ऑफ फिनो इन केस ऑफ पेथोलॉजिकल जेंडर्स सो इन फोटोथेरापी वट हैपन्स डेट लाइट पास on baby so as a result of that the there is degradation of bilirubin occur degradation of bilirubin occur and that bilirubin it excreted bilirubin excreted from body through stools and urines so in case of phototherapy the light pass on baby so the bilirubin get degraded uh, the bilirubin is start degradation and lead to excretion of bilirubins through stools and urines so in phototherapy there is two sort of light is used that is blue light there is blue light and white light so in case of phototherapy we have a four blue lights and two white lights these blue lights it is used it is used for degradation of bilirubin while white light it is used for observation it is used for observation so there is four blue lights two white lights blue light used for degradation of bilirubin while white light is used for observation now there is another important question how much is the distance between the child and the light so how much is the distance between light and child so this is important the distance between child and lights are 45 cm and the lights that is used in case of phototherapy what are the wavelengths for that what are the wavelengths of that light so the wavelength of that light r 460 to 490 nanometer so the distance between the child and lights are 45 cm and the wavelength of the lights are 460 to 490 nanometer so students that's all about the pathological genders and thank you so much